so let, let's maybe let's jump into I think it's a good segue into the like pleasure and anxiety cycle, um, which I think is very well laid out in terms of and, and I think it, 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 it also will transition nicely into the cognitive um, cycle and why alcohol is addictive. And so I don't think you call it the pleasure anxiety cycle. I think that's the way that, that I think of it. But mm-hmm. can you describe that cycle a little bit, kind of the reason that we have the drink in the first place and then the corresponding anxiety and then how that kind of cycles on itself? Yeah, absolutely. So, so and it's very simple. It's obviously alcohol is a drug um, and it's a sedative, a depressant. Um, and when I'm using the word depressant, I'm using it in its chemical sense as something that decreases or inhibits nerve activity. So that's why when you take an alcoholic drink, it makes you feel slightly dulled. If you're nervous when you have it, it can make you feel relaxed. It's that sedating effect. But of course, the human brain creates and excretes a huge array array of chemicals, drugs and hormones that it creates itself. These are naturally occurring things, you you know, you and your listeners would have heard of like adrenaline, cortisol, endorphins, dopamine, all of this stuff that the brain creates and excretes. Now, there's a lot we humans don't understand about this process, but what we do know is the brain works by way of something called homeostasis, which is a fancy word for basically just a chemical balancing act. It's all of these chemicals, drugs, and hormones all balancing each other out. And if they do balance each other out, you generally feel like positive and quite resilient. Not to say you don't have bad days because everyone does. And and of course, we're all different. Some people's positive and resilient is going to be slightly less than someone else's. But when your brain chemistry is is in balance, it's how you feel at your best. Now, if you introduce alcohol, which is a sedative, your brain realizes that there's been a disturbance to that balance and it seeks to counter it. So it, it releases things like adrenaline and cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And what that does, it's trying to counter the sedating effects of the alcohol. I often think of it as, you, you know, the old fashioned bar weighing scales where you've got a bar and two baskets hanging on it. Imagine that's your brain chemistry. And on the one hand, you've got the sedatives, the things that make you feel sleepy and relaxed. And on the other hand, you've got the stimulants, the things that make you feel awake and alert. Imagine it's balancing out. Now, when you take alcohol, you dump a load into the sedative basket. So the balance gets tipped. So your brain counters that by stuffing a load into the stimulant basket. But of course, the problem then is when the alcohol wears off, that feeling of anxiety is left hanging on for a bit. So to go back to the basket analogy, you know, it's balanced. You put something in the depressant side, your brain puts something in the stimulant side. But when the alcohol is released, it tips over towards the stimulant side. The short explanation is for every for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So whatever sedating or dulling effect you get from alcohol, there's a corresponding feeling of anxiety when it wears off. Of course, the more you drink, the more your brain's countering the sedating effects and the worse you feel when you wear off. And this is why people wake up often three or four in the morning with their heart beating really fast, unable to get back to sleep. They might be absolutely exhausted, but it's the equivalent of drinking loads of strong coffee. They're overstimulated. They can't sleep even though they desperately need to because of that chemical imbalance. Now, it's not a pleasant feeling. Okay, that that anxious feeling you know anxiety that's a colloquial term people use for that anxious feeling you get when you're hung over it's not a pleasant feeling and there's two ways you can get rid of it one is to wait a few days for your brain chemistry to get back to normal but who wants to be miserable and tense for a few days because there's a much quicker way of doing it and that's to take another drink now when you take that other drink it's a wonderful feeling but it's no more than relieving the anxiety that the previous dose caused when it wore off. I sometimes explain it to people. Imagine you're in a car and your goal is to drive at exactly 30 miles an hour. Okay. It's a clear day. There's no wind. It's sunny. You've got a lovely flat road, no bends, and it's just a straight line. So you're just sat there with your foot very specifically depressed on the on the accelerator you don't have to move it at all you're just cruising along quite happily at 30 miles an hour now if you suddenly go off the concrete road and you're going to gravel and mud and wet your vehicle's going to slow down so you have to push down much harder on the accelerator to get up to 30 miles an hour okay but wait if you then go off the mud and grass and gravel and back onto the dry road your car's going to 
burst ahead out of all control. That's basically what happens when you stop drinking. So that's the, and, and that also that that's the main pleasure that regular drink, drinkers, daily drinkers, get from their glass of wine, their beer, their spirits, whatever it is. That wonderful feeling of relaxation they get from that first drink is no more than just relieving the unpleasant feeling that the previous doses caused. 